السلام عليكم حجاب يوريز This week's topic is a powerful one, a special one, and a very personal one to all of us who are sharing our stories. Um, I, most of you know that um, I'm an Arab. I am half Omani <laughs> and half French. Uh, my mother is French and my father is Omani. And I live, of course, in Oman, which is in the Middle East. This is something not a lot of you know. My my mother, as I said, is French, that you know, but what you don't know is that she's a Christian. And um, I was born in France, and then when I was a baby, um, mommy came back to Oman to be with my dad. And so I was brought up, I was raised in Oman. My parents sadly separated when I was three years old, and I was raised by my mother. Now remember, she's Christian. She could have easily gone back um, to France and raised my brother and I there, but she decided, no, she'll stick here. Do you know why she decided to stay here? She wanted us to be brought up as Muslims and be close to our family. And that is one thing I am ever grateful for her, for, for her sacrifice. I can't have imagined how difficult it must have been there. Not only is she not an Arab, she's not a Muslim, but yet she sacrificed. And even talking about it just brings tears to my eyes. Because Allah has blessed me with a mother, yes, she might not, she might not be a Muslim, but Alhamdulillah, she raised me, as you see, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And um, I'm tearing, but anyway, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay, so I was raised, as I said, by my mother. Um, I lived here most of my life, and. My mother even would fast Ramadan with us just so she, you know, we'd see somebody fasting in the house. Um, I didn't really think much of the hijab. I was actually a musician beforehand. I was a violinist. I started uh, considering the hijab when I was 15 because I had um, friends both males and females are our colleagues in the orchestra and they both and mashallah they had islam um advice they had islamic brotherly advice and they and they asked me once why don't you consider uh, becoming a hijabi and um, they talked to me about it and and then you know it re up until then nobody had actually sat down with me and talked to me about this now i can't blame my mother for this my mother is doing her best um, but that just goes to show that doesn't mean that I live in an Arab country, that I, am, I have it easy. Because those around me didn't cover, the girls my age didn't cover, to this day some girls don't cover and that is their personal choice. And so by the age of 16, Alhamdulillah, I decided to um, start wearing the hijab. Now as I made that decision, I had to travel and I had a, a tour to do in Europe with the orchestra and as I was packing my suitcase for that travel my mother's like what are you doing I was like what I'm just taking some scarves and she looked at me funny she says are you going to cover you're going to England you're going to Belgium do you want to cover there I said well I'll just take it with me there's no harm if I want to cover then I have my hijab and subhanallah I started covering when I went to uh, when I was in England now people the Arabs might think what because usually that's the opposite happens when you go abroad you sort of think freedom and you take your scarf off and you know you feel you can do anything but i was different alhamdulillah i went there and i think oh why don't i cover up and i started and i covered i started covering half and you know i did because it just i i knew that i wanted to become a hijabi and i wanted to be a lifetime commitment i didn't want to start covering and then take it off and so i said i'll take it step by step and i asked allah to make this easier for me so i covered it only half meaning i had one of those square hijabs that i'd tie and i'd have half of my hair showing and then gradually week by week day by day it, it started to come forward and then everything else started to change um, and then when I got back to Amman and I, uh, I told mommy, mommy I've made the decision that I'm covering and it, mm, I don't think it was easy for her, I think it was harder for her to accept that I was covered than it was for me 
because she thought now I'm French and I have this daughter who's covered when I go to France, you know, all, all those things crossed her mind. But anyway, alhamdulillah, Rabbil uh, Alameen, when you have the niyyah, when you have the intention to actually do something and it's true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then believe me, Allah makes things easier for you. And anyway, so now uh, I was kind of the talk of the family. Oh, look, Maya, she is 16 and she started to cover up. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And I would cover up in Eid at weddings. You know, there was not a day that I would take it off, except when I was at home, of course. And um, then I get kept. And then you would think that the, the society would support a young girl, you know, the teenage girl taking this big decision of covering up. But now, listen to this story. I have two stories to share with you. Once I was coming out of somebody's house and somebody crossed me and um, she's like, why are you covering up? I'm like, uh, because I want to. She's like, yeah, but now my mom keeps telling me that I have to be like you and I have to cover now. Just, you know, kind of like she didn't like it. Why I had decided to cover. You would think she would congratulate me, you know, this upon taking this decision. But no, she didn't. Anyway, I was kind of... I didn't understand at then what, uh, why I got that reaction. And to this day, I still don't understand. But anyway, that is her choice. She found it a struggle to actually put a headscarf on and cover her hair. And again, I don't blame her. Everybody has their struggles. Everybody has a difficult thing they have to do in Islam, a great sacrifice. And probably that's hers. Um, another thing is, another story is, this is a grown woman. I was a friend of her daughter's. Now, when she saw me starting to cover up, she came up to me and she's like, uh, MashaAllah, you became a muhajjaba? I said, yes, auntie, I'm trying. And she's like, well, um, I don't think you can do it. You see, because I wanted to cover and I didn't, um, I couldn't handle it. And uh, so I don't think you'll do either. And I was like, are you serious? In my mind, I'm thinking, are you serious? And I said, well, auntie, everybody is different, but inshallah, I will, I will keep it on. And then a couple of months passed by and I saw a family function. She came and she hugged me and made me congratulate me. I said, congratulations, auntie, khair. And she's like, I became a mahajaba. Oh, and I was so happy. And I said, see, auntie, you managed to do it. Inshallah, you'll keep it on. And, uh, and then a couple of months later, I saw her. And she, there was no hello, no salam alaikum, no smile, just a serious face because she didn't have a hijab on. She had decided to take it off and here I was with my hijab on. That was sad, but I think again, I kind of not defeated her, but I kind of proved my point that I still have it on. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, to this day, I still have my hijab on. And keep in mind, this is all in an Arab country, so it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the States, you can be in England, you can be in Indonesia, you can be anywhere. This wearing a hijab is a struggle, no matter where you are. If it was very easy, if it was really that easy, then many girls would be covered, but they are not because it's not easy. And it doesn't mean that, oh, okay, now you're covered, show off your hair. Of course, we are, we are girls, we like to be beautiful we show off our beauty we, that's something we have to admit which is why it's so difficult for us to keep it covered as Dina Tokyo would say but um, it's it's a sacrifice it's a decision you make for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something he's asked of us and again I'm not saying that those who don't cover those that don't cover that is their own choice that is something that have to deal with with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not going to judge her because she might not be covered, but she might be reading the Quran more than I do. She might be praying her salat bi khushur more than I do. So I am not anyone to judge anybody. I'm just talking about myself, my story, and how um, how I came to be what I am today. Excuse the different video quality suddenly. It's just that my um, camera, this one, just uh, the battery died and I didn't want to finish this off without actually saying something at the end. At the end of the day, the hijab is a beautiful thing. And I feel it protected me in some way and now it has become part of me. I cannot imagine even if you had given me a choice of going out without the hijab, I would tell you I am sorry. Um, but the hijab is who I am and it's become part of me and if anybody can accept that about me 
then they they then they shouldn't be with me because this is hijab and I our package and um, I think it was easier for me to become a muhajjaba because I took it by, step by step you know I didn't sort of just wake up one morning and think you know what I'm gonna be a muhajjaba I'm not gonna go out anymore show my hair um, I took it step by step because I wanted this to be a lifetime commitment and I am alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so blessed to to be a Muslim and um, I was talking to my friend today I was telling her that I have to do this video and she's like you know Maya you are uh, I was envious of you and I thought really she says yes because you were one of the first I was the one of the first among my friends to to put the scarf on uh, the hijab she's like I, I didn't know how I couldn't understand how you did it and I wanted to do it and I couldn't and seeing you really made me envious of you and then uh, she told me that um, what inspired her what gave her the push was alhamdulillah me and um, she was once going out and she saw a small girl who was wearing the scarf the, the lihaf and an abaya and she thought that girl was the most beautiful thing she'd ever seen and she said now if this young girl who's not even obliged to wear it at that age is wearing it why aren't i so subhanallah now she is uh, fully committed to it mashallah and uh, i hope if you're considering to wear the hijab or you're wearing it and you're you're struggling just remember why you're doing this and who you're doing this for and i ask allah to help you in whatever uh, problems you may face with the hijab and believe me that Insha'Allah, you will get the rewards for being a muhajaba. And um, I think I shall end my video on this note. Thank you so much for watching our videos. And um, don't forget to like us on the Facebook uh, page, which I'll put again the link down there. And I shall see you all next week, Insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum.